Thank you, Maddie. You're welcome. Well, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, good wherever, whatever you are. Cheers. It's Monday. Gotta love Mondays. Hmm. Ah. Okay, guys. Um, today we are doing a live show again. Once again, we are going to be talking about Texas, but specifically, we're going to be talking about winter storms. Um, one of the most common questions being asked out there is, how do we keep this from happening again? Now, I know it might feel like it's a little premature because we still got lots of people sitting in a mess. But the reality is, when you're going through a tragedy is usually when you start thinking how to avoid it the next time. Right? Because no one's going to watch a video about how to avoid a winter storm and protect your house um, next, next spring, next summer, next fall. They're going to wait until their pipes are frozen to find out what they could have done to save their problem <laughs> because that's just the way humans are, right? We get very distracted very easily. So while we're on the subject and we are dealing with this mess, we are going to talk about how to prepare. i got some displays. We're going to talk construction technology today. We're going to talk about uh, processes and procedures and, and um, the differences that, that happened during the Texas storm are a great example to us about when do we say, um, I'm going to just trust the status quo or the state or my experience? And when do you say, maybe, just maybe, there's something I need to learn here? Because I would like to change the goal from um, uh, disrupted and irritated and annoyed to I got through that with no problem whatsoever. Okay? Now, so before we jump into this, um, hello, Sandy. Welcome back. Welcome, everybody, in the chat. Welcome to our new members who just joined, Phil and Alan. Cheers, guys. We are going to be dealing with uh, a little bit of a presentation here today. So while Matt messes around with my screens and I get completely dizzy, I'll just jump into this. There are two major categories of people who went through the storm in Texas, and that is people who had power or at least rolling brownouts, so they were able to keep the heat on, and people who didn't have power. And I want to make sure you, we differentiate the two because I think there was a lot of good advice leading up to the storm from what I'm gathering now about leave your water trickling. Everybody has a neighbor who's been through something like this before or a family relative or someone who moved out east or, right? I mean, there was information out there. Not everybody had it, but a large majority of people were thinking, you know, at least I should have the water trickling. Or they, they drained all the lines and just left town and said, this is going to be crazy. I'm out of here. Great time to visit Mexico. <laughs> I don't know. But here's the deal. If you decided to leave your water trickling, you were making one very, very large assumption. And that is, is that the hydro was going to stay on. And that is something that is out of your control. Uh -huh. Just absorb that for a second. Unless you're making your own hydro, moving water in your pipes assumes the hydro stays on. That's a hell of an assumption, as we've learned from the weeks past, that when something is out of your control, it can't be formulated into your disaster response plan or your disaster preparation plan. Only things that are in your control can be in that plan if you want to guarantee a positive result. Makes a little bit of sense, right? So let's look at it this way. Let's pretend it's two weeks ago. The national weather forecast is saying, folks, it's going to get pretty darn cold. Looks like it might last a few days. There's going to be some precipitation. The first thing you want to do is exaggerate the idea of that storm in your mind and go, we are in for three or four days of freezing rain. Okay. And, and if you think that way, that means you have no hydro because freezing rain does horrible, horrible mess to any kind of electrical grid. And if that's where you start your idea of, I got to be prepared, I'm going to lose hydro. I don't have any heat. Hydro. God, I'm, obviously, I'm from Canada, right? If, you, if you're losing your power, okay, then you don't have heat unless you've got a secondary heat source. So first thing in your plan should be have a secondary heat source. Now, if you have a fireplace that burns wood, that's great. If it's a gas fireplace, you still need high, you still need power for that. Okay, if, the, if, you, if you don't have a little bit of power to your gas fireplace, it's going to turn itself off. Candles aren't enough to take care of plumbing with your building code. So you, if you don't have a secondary source of heat, you've got to move to phase two of the plan, which is not run the water. It's to 
close off the shutoff valve, whether it's at the street or you have one in your home, okay? Stop the water from coming to your house. And before you do that, fill your tub. You want to make sure you've got water to flush your toilets, okay? You can go to cottage rules if it gets really extreme and you've all learned you can melt snow. That's great and lovely. And if you turn off the water of your house and you drain the lines. Now over here is my little, little quick mock-up of what an attic looks like, okay? So you got the the, uh, the ceiling rims, part of your your, um, your cavity upstairs, and you got insulation, you got a pipe on top of it. Whether it's PEX or it's copper, it doesn't matter. It's always sitting on top. It might even be a couple inches higher. You might have blown-in insulation. All of the things basically remain the same. These copper and PEX lines were uh, exposed to the temperature of the atmosphere inside your attic roof. And what happens is these are the ones that are getting blown up, okay? Because there's nothing to protect them. They're on the wrong side of the insulation to stay protected, okay? So this is your first thing. If this is full of water and it's copper line, it's going to expand. And when water freezes, it expands and it blows the copper in half and makes a hell of a mess. We've all learned that the hard way. So if you drain all of the water lines after you turn off your shutoff valve, okay, just open up all your kitchen faucets and bath faucets. Traditionally, a house in Texas, let me just draw this out real quick, okay, You've got your slab, and then you've got your, your house, all right? And you've got a roof system, and this might be the garage, okay? And this is your living space. And up in the attic, you've got your, your um, air conditioning unit, and you've got your heating unit. Out in the garage, you've got your hot water tank for your hot water in a lot of cases. And so this is the part of the house that you're going to try to keep hot, okay? That's, the, that's where you're heating, and in the winter conditions, the pipe that comes from the hot water tank and comes into the house, or maybe goes up into the attic and runs across, that's going to be a problem. Now, I'm going to get a couple of other marker colors here so we can color code all this. It might help out a little bit. So let's take this, for instance. Here's your hot water. Okay, comes up in the attic, comes across, and it's going to come down the wall to the bathroom, to the vanity, and it's going to come down the wall to the kitchen. Same thing with your cold line, okay? But it's going to be coming from somewhere inside your slab in your house. And it's going to be going up into the attic as well. And it's going to run down. And it's going to run across. And it'll run down. And the reason that you guys build like that is because when you pour a slab, it's so much easier just to have one location that is the intake from the city. And that's it. And it makes perfectly good sense as long as you're not getting winter. Now... This is the construction. Your plumbing lines are running exterior of the hot zone, okay? And this is what we gotta deal with. This is the weak spot in your construction. Water lines are on top of your, your ceiling rafters on top of the insulation. Now, one of the easiest things you can do is drain all the lines, right? But for even better protection long-term, you can change your insulation system. So if your water line is running across the floor, the, the ceiling joist like this, what you can do is you can remove the insulation, all right? Hopefully this makes some sense. I've got a couple more bats here, all right? And you can lay it like this. Is that working okay on the camera angle? Mm -hmm. Okay, now, so you used to have insulation inside the, the cavity. Now you're taking it out and you're putting it on top, all right? And you want to have it extended a couple, three, three and a half inches on each side of the joist cavity. All right. So cut them nice and wide. Usually a bat comes at four foot width. If you cut it to two feet, it'll cover the, the cavity plus enough that you'll get a nice little thermal break there. And then the reason you want to leave this nice airspace here is because you want the heat from your heated part of your house rising up through your drywall, making contact with your water line, and then isolating it from the exterior temperature with another bat on top. Here we go. And that is how you take care of your water line. If you run it that way, you're fine. The only consideration now is, what about in the summertime, I've got a cold water line, am I gonna get condensation? So they do sell a foam pipe wrap. It's got a little adhesive on it. And you can cover all your water lines with foam pipe wrap so that you don't get condensation and you're not gonna get moisture building up in your attic. That is a great way to make a minor adjustment to protect your water lines moving forward, okay? Uh, okay, we are 
Yeah, Adrian, you're a member. You got questions about your flooded out house. By all means, we do have the members forum. You can reach me there. If you have questions about that, um, just go to our community tab on the homepage. All right. And Michelle's going to put up all the information you need to get access to that forum. It's not a big deal. And we'll be able to take care of that and help you out. You can send me pictures as well. And if you need that kind of information, join a membership program, get access to our forum, and I can help you out. Now, that's about it for this. Now, if it's running in the same direction and it was sitting on the insulation, I'll just do this visually. You can have a really long cavity and it could be sitting like this. All you have to do now is just run your bats, take it out and run it across like this. Same thing, get that extension on each side, okay? So that the pipe is in contact with the air rising out of the house that is gonna keep it from freezing. Nice and simple, okay guys? All right. I get this off the table because tonight we are going to take a ton of questions. We're going to be opening up the phone lines again real soon. I got to clean that now. And we are also raising money for Feeding Texas. If you've noticed, the more and more that this story becomes last week, the less and less everybody is talking about it. The world is obsessed with the idea of the vaccine rollout. And there's not a whole lot of conversation going on about what's going on in Texas. I think when the, the totality of the mess finally hits the fan and people start to realize exactly how much of a tragedy this was, they'll be talking about it again. But until then, I might be the only bastion of sanity that you folks have to, to talk to to get through this mess. So we are going to be working tonight doing our, another live show. We're doing a live show again on Thursday. It'll be one week since we started. OK, we're going to take a couple nights off so I can uh, let the face relax a little bit and get a little rest. Starting to lose sensation in my lips. <laughs> um, and then we're going to see, you know, we'll gauge the interest in the, in the topic. If you guys are still going through trouble and you still need help and the phone's still ringing, then we'll just keep on doing these live shows every few days. Make sure that we're available to help you out. All right. Now, back to getting prepared for wintertime. Um, a lot of you folks in Texas have got an irrigation box for your water supply. You're shut off at the street. Okay, so you have a ground level, and you've got this bin down here by the front of the house. And you got the city water line coming in, and you've got your shut-up valve, and then you got the water going to the house. Okay? And you got this green plastic lid. All right? Can I just suggest that that shut-off valve is useless for you to manage your water situation if you don't insulate above that. There we go, Matt. Can you just point that right at me again, please? So here we go. You take the green lid off, all right? You take one or two of these bad boys, you stuff it in the green hole. So once you've turned off the water, insulate the cavity, put the lid on. Now when the winter storm comes, the ground temperature is going to be rising up, and this insulation is going to separate the cold air from the warm air underneath, and you'll have complete control over your shutoff valve. Make sense? It's only a few days we're talking about. Frost line isn't going to get all the way through there. You got about six inches you can work with. You can use two layers of this R12. If the average homeowner would go out and buy one bundle of R12 insulation like this, you'd be able to insulate all your lines and have a little bit for your, your shutoff valve to boot. Okay. Now, doing that gives you a, a, a lot, lot more flexibility because now in the midst of the winter's time storm, all of the water supply that's coming to the house is six inches underground. It's not freezing. It's only a few days. The frost line doesn't get that deep. So now what you have is the ability to turn off the water, go to sleep, know you're not going to freeze your lines because you drain them. Get up the next morning. You can go out to the street, lift up the lid, pull the insulation, shh, use your $10 key that you bought, turn on your water, put the insulation back, put the lid back, go into the house, pressurize your line, use your toilet, do your cleaning, do your cooking, whatever you got to do. And as long as the city hasn't put you on a boil water advisory, you're going to be able to function like normal. And then when you're done your chores, just go back out to the street, turn off the water, go back inside the house, drain the lines. Okay. It's going to cost you 10 or $20 a day in heating the water. That's about it. And on the same note, make sure that you turn off your hot water tanks because they're likely going to drain like a siphon. Okay. And that'll be a problem, especially if they're electric. If they're gas, it's not a big issue, but if it's electric, Turn off the electric coil. Let them sit for about an hour before you drain your lines. All right. It's, it's, not, uh, it's not something that's not manageable, but you just got to be able to be paying attention. Okay. 
That's yeah, Texas flag is upside down. Just kidding. Yesterday it was upside down when I put it on. I got here about five minutes before the show went on and I, my flag finally arrived in the mail from Amazon. So I raced down here to put it up. And of course I was thinking more about the presentation than how the flag was hanging. So my apologies. Anyway, I'm sure you all forgave me, right? All right. Now, listen, let's just bring up the highlight here. Our fundraising effort is going to um, Texas, Feeding Texas. Okay, it's an organization that supplies the local food banks all around the Texas area. So if you are in the have the ability to help them out, then do so. The news is that there are a lot of people out there who do not have insurance coverage for what they just went through. It's, uh, it's difficult. So it hasn't been that long since the last major storm, and a lot of people are now double dipping into storm recovery after storm recovery. And in the midst of COVID and everything else, there are going to be a lot of families who are going to really need that support. So jump on in there, um, give your pizza money this week, and maybe you do some chicken and rice, right? That's how I like to see life. <laughs> and uh, do what you can to help out. We'd appreciate it. Now, as far as uh, the preparedness for a winter storm, there's a lot of other great ideas out there. You know, stocking up and all that jazz. And you've heard all those stories. But what I wanted to do tonight was just go through the basics of building construction and, and preparation. Now, let's just go through the list one more time, okay? <sighs> If you, between now and the next storm, you can change your copper lines to PEX, that would be a dramatic change, okay? And if you take into account the insulation techniques that I just showed you, then you're going to be able to isolate your plumbing from the cold weather as long as you have power. Now, one of the questions that came up the other night was, well, should I just change all the plumbing in my whole house? And the answer is no, okay? Do that the next time you do a major remodeling or renovation project. But the cost of changing all of that plumbing is very extensive because in a lot of cases in Texas, your plumbing is on the exterior walls of the building and behind kitchen cabinetry and vanities and showers. And that is going to be really expensive just to change the pipe. But you can change the pipe in the attics and leading to the hot water tank to something that's a little more robust. You can change the, the faucets to the uh, to, to your you're working outside to a frost-free hose bib. Right, and one of these is really simple. The gasket that shuts the water off is way the heck in here, and so it can be on an exterior wall, but there's insulation that keeps it from freezing. And you can close this valve and then drain it, and it works amazing at solving those problems. If you can keep your attic from having a pipe burst by insulating properly and moving to a more robust material like a PEX, and you turn off the water before the storm comes, and you're prepared to have water in the to in the tub so that you have water to flush your plumbing, then you can get through a few days of discomfort in relative ease. It's not that tricky. You insulate the valve at the street so that you can turn the water on and off when you need it, and then you are going to be the one that's in control even if you lose power. You don't have to rely on anybody, which is really good news, right? If you lose power, you light candles, you have a heat source. Big deal. Put everybody in the living room, turn the candles, you'll be fine. Right? Okay. Now, let's get into some questions because I'm in the mood to answer questions tonight. I don't want to have to think too hard. <laughs> and the presentations make me think, and I'm tired of thinking. It's been a long week. Ah, hello, everybody. Oh, look at Larry's in the chat tonight as well, Sandy. Look at this. Chris is in here. Um, yeah. The, 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 the secret really comes down to draining out the lines. If there's no water in the PEX line or, or the copper line, or even if it's half full or at, at the very least depressurized, right? Then when the water freezes, it's not going to be an issue. Now, I've got a little bit of fiberglass pink floating around in here right now. I'm starting to get a scratchy throat. That's just freaking lovely. Probably should have worn a damn mask for my presentation, but that's what you get. huh? Okay, guys. Let's not put the number up quite yet because I'd like to take a look at, read some of these remarks, okay? Um, thanks, Manny. I got some for you. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. I'll let you drive. We're here for a good time, not a long time. <laughs> this is what they call in radio death because it's silence. What do we got, buddy? Um, oh, you're right through the beginning. Okay. Um, yeah, so let's start right there. Um, 
What about metal pipes? How do you attach pecs? Okay, we talked about this yesterday. I've got a couple of visual aids here. What do I got? What do I got? Oh, here it is. All right. Yeah, so this right here. Matt, maybe I can get you to zoom in on this while I answer the question. All right. We'll go a little back and forth. We should have a third guy down here, really. Well, you are two men. I understand. <laughs> so what we have here is a shark bite fitting that has a metal thread. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's nice and clean. So this is a male thread. It's a shark bite fitting. So it slides over pecs and you can stick that on pecs and you can use that to convert to any metal threaded pipe, galvanized or steel because the threading is universal ever since its conception, they've never changed it. So whether you're using brass or metal or galvanized, it's always the same, okay? Now, pretty sure I said, well, I have to wait for that, but now, what I, that didn't work, did it? All right. Okay, maybe that did work. I'm learning how to use a phone. They also come in the female version, okay? So you don't have to buy a coupling and this, all right? depending on what's available. But yeah, you can convert from PEX right into galvanized. You just want to use a little bit of a, um, it's a plumber's paste, okay? And it lubricates all the threads and it helps to make sure you get a good watertight seal. All right, and that is as simple as it needs to be. Now, where are we? Where are we, where are we? Um, where was that question? There was one right underneath that that was looked pretty cool. Yeah, let's just stay current for now. Let's just stay current. This shouldn't be too hard. Uh, stay away from the candles. Too many house fires because of candles. You know, I think that's a real big fallacy. Um, <laughs> I think grown-ups should stay sober during a crisis, and then you can have candles and heat your house just fine. Uh, I use candles all the time. And uh, I don't find them dangerous. I just think it's like uh, using a chef's knife. You just got to have a little respect for what you got going on, and then you weren't going to set your house on fire. Like, dear Lord, how do you think humans got to be this uh, around on the planet this long? We, we survived on candles and torches for thousands of years. Don't tell me now with all of our information and technology and abilities, we can't light a candle and not burn ourselves to death. All right. I understand it's tragic when it happens, but it's completely preventable, right? Safety first. Use your head. All right. Uh, let me see. Okay. Yeah, shark bite is convenient. It can go um, uh, copper on one side and, and pex on the other because it deals with the outside diameter. We went into that yesterday. Again, if you haven't seen all of the live shows for the last four days, it's a playlist. You go onto the homepage, just check them out. There's so much information there because there's so many people from different situations asking different questions. Dear Lord, I think we must have covered almost everything. Um, when did I start in the trades? Oh, my God. Legally? or I started when I was like nine. Um, legally when I was 16. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I got a lot of experience. When you work 50 to 80 hours a week for 45 years, that'll that'll add up. Um, is PEX okay for potable water? Yeah. You know, here's the thing. Let's just deal with this. Um, somewhere in the beginning of time, when PEX first came out, they made a version of this stuff that was not a good plan. Okay. And then they got rid of it. Now, the PEX that they're selling today, whether it's A or B, or you call it one or type two, whatever, the conversation is this. Um, it's safe, okay? There may be a little bit of something there that might not be perfect, right? But have you ever gone for a walk down the street in New York, right? That's just as toxic. So if you use this all the days of your life, it might, it might cause you to die young. So you'll die on a Thursday instead of a Saturday. It's really not a big issue. But if it means you never have to go through another burst pipe again, I'd sacrifice the two days. Um, but I'm not dealing with science there. It's just anecdotal evidence. But uh, the worries and fears about the quality of water with dealing with PEX, forget about it. It's, it's not even an issue. Let's get on here. Um, yes. Bum, bum, bum. Okay. What I was talking about earlier was a lady was talking about, uh, do I have to change all the pipes, do all these renovations? I said, no, because you know what? Your goal is not to be protected in case the power goes out so that you have the best plumbing and it won't burst. Your goal should be take that money you were going to spend on your renovation and just buy a generator, right? Have control over your own power in the case of an emergency. 
Because it doesn't take a winter storm to cause an emergency. A generator can be there for any time there's an issue with the power grid for any reason. So don't be in a big hurry to run out and go, oh, I need 4,000 you know, feet of PEX to run my home all over again. And I'm changing out you know, a kitchen and a laundry room and uh, four bathrooms and a master bathroom. That's just ridiculous. You know, go and buy yourself a generator, have a couple of jugs of gas laying around, and you'll be good to go. Right? Make your own damn heat. All right. Let's see. Uh, what kind of beer am I drinking? It's ginger ale, guys. It's not even a beer. I am trying to be careful. You know, I've been a little lazy lately. I've got to be, watch the old waistline. Hmm. Okay. Let me get a real question here. Candles should not be left unattended. Exactly. They're kind of like children, right? <laughs> you don't just stick them in a room and come back eight hours later and make sure to see if everything's okay. That's not going to work out. Uh, okay, so there's a question here about ice damming. Have you ever heard of ice dam on the siding? Yeah, I've got that right now. Um, folks have one and a half split level and notice a water and small water spot in the ceiling after the thaw. Yeah, ice damming is, is going to be an issue. You know what? I'm going to draw this out in a little bit easier way for people to realize what's going on. Ice damming is a fancy term that us northerners use for um, we got a lot of snow and uh, we don't have a perfect house. So the heat left and it uh, thawed out the snow, but it's so cold outside it freezes almost instantly. It's just level. So we got a roof and we got a wall. Okay. And mm -hmm, that's actually not a very good representation because there is a bird's mouth on that. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. Now, here is your roof, and here's your wall cavity, okay? And we put on layers of shingles, like this, okay? And what happens is, when the snow falls, it fills up all that. And then the sun comes out, and then it starts to melt and freezes up a little bit, and it turns into ice. Now, all of this snow, now it turns to ice, and it grows, and a lot of it will grow in the direction of underneath the shingle. Okay? Makes sense? You're not going to stop ice from growing. I don't care what you do. Um, and what happens is then it gets warm again or the, the house is losing heat because you're not designed to hold heat in the wintertime. And then it thaws, but it can't go this way because there's ice. So then it travels the only direction it can, which is up. And it finds a joint in the OSB. Okay? You're sheathing. And then it'll follow the inside of the roof and it'll land or, or it'll hit another crack. And, you know, every four feet, you've got another layer of plywood and it'll drip and it'll start to pool up on the ceiling. And then you'll see water damage or it'll just drip down the wall. And then your wall starts to get these little wrinkly lines. OK, that is called ice damming. And the effect of it is mild. But if you have uh, fiberglass insulation and the water gets inside the wall cavity, as we saw in yesterday's video, wet fiberglass sinks, and it doesn't recover, okay? So that is one advantage that the mineral wool has over fiberglass, that if it gets wet, it doesn't shrink, all right? And the, the house will absorb the water on mineral wool, and everything will be fine again, but on fiberglass, it does shrink, and it leaves a void in the wall cavity, and that is a place for condensation to happen in the summertime when the heat comes back and your air conditioning is blowing, and you'll de and eventually develop mold in that area. It's a small spot, and you can cut it out and repair it. It's not the end of the world. And while you're there, you can change your insulation. But um, it's good to know that what's going on there is not a flood. It's not a bus pipe. Little water spots, little stains, little issues like that. Those are issues related to water penetrating your building envelope and then finding somewhere to escape to. Okay. And it's just maintenance and it's repairs. It's not a flood. So don't get too worked up over it. It's not like a, if there's even a pinhole, a small leak, you're dealing with like probably. I don't know, 16 to 24 ounces of water a minute just with the tiniest little hole because it's under pressure, okay? You you know when you have a leak in your pipe. It makes a noise and it makes a puddle. And that's how you know. If you see just a little water damage, it's usually related to just ice damming. And it's temporary. There's no long-term negative effect on the roof shingle. There's no long-term negative effect on the sheathing of the house. Just so you know, that's what's going on. Once it dries up, everything will be just fine. Tickety-boo, all right? Ah, la, 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 la. 
Okay. Yeah. People are in here. Smash the like button. You know, yeah, do that. Hit the like button, guys. You're watching the video. Let's just, uh, let's get up to 400 likes here real quick in a hurry. All right. Uh, send the signal to YouTube so that they share this thing tonight. Once again, um, <laughs> off subject. I don't really want to go off subject tonight. So if that's okay, we'll just stay on subject for a little while. Uh, would I recommend Texas Friends plastic wrap their windows? Yeah, you know what? I'm not a real big fan of that. And I'll be honest with you. You've got two situations going on. If you have power and you have heat, you're not going to notice when it goes to minus six in Texas. You're not going to have massive drafts unless you have single pane glass windows. And if that's the case, go get yourself some new windows, okay? Because even your air conditioning will thank you right? Your whole house will thank you if you upgrade your windows. Your house will be worth more money and you'll get much more energy efficiency efficiency all year round. There goes the lips already, Matt. Look at that. Yes, efficiency. All right. But uh, the plastic on the windows, you know, if you're going to spend a whole three, four, five, six months in the winter like we do, and you have old windows that are drafty, then yeah, it, the plastic really helps kill the draft. And then you don't have your heat running um, at 76 or 78 the whole winter, you can run it at 72. But when you have drafts, you use more heat. So over a short period of time, like three or four days, you're going to deal with it. It's not really worth the investment or the time or the hassle or the repainting of your trim because that tape makes a mess. So I would not suggest that. Um, even hanging a blanket if you really want to, fine. But if you lose heat, you're going to want to have a blanket on that window. The plastic ain't going to do a damn bit of good. All right. Which flag is that? Well, this is the flag from Texas, just so we know. Wow. Um, damn proud to be the only YouTuber out there that's live streaming any assistance at all to you folks. Not sure what happened to everybody in the construction business down in Texas who's on YouTube, but hey, uh, I'll leave that and they can answer that themselves. Um, you know, it's funny how many people are celebrities in the construction world that live in Texas and who had a disaster because they didn't know how to protect themselves. What does that tell you? Are they really construction people or are they just TV people? Anyway, um, moving on. I don't need to make any enemies here today. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, we're getting a ton of different questions here. Let's, let's answer them. Let's go five minutes. We're going to do uh, rapid fire. We'll answer any question that comes up on the screen. I'll start near the top. Boom, don't move. And I'm just follow the feed, okay? Here we go. Rapid fire testing. Where can you rent a crimp tool from? Home Depot. Garbage legs bayer, layered in emergency. Ain't going to matter. Uh, you live in Windsor. Got a wood fireplace in the basement, which I don't use. So there's a lot of cold air coming through. So I just stuffed it with pink insulation. You showed what's a better fix. Um, mineral oil is a better fix because you're still going to get moisture. And put it in a plastic bag and tie a string to it. So you remember it's in there. So the next time you light a fire, you don't get, fill your house with smoke. Um, uh, blah, 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 blah. Question, 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 question. Uh, not another anonymous donation to Feeding Texas. Uh, another donation to Feeding Texas. Loving to see that, guys. Thank you very much. And if you're just joining us, we're raising money to Feed Texas. Let me just tell you real quickly. It is a charitable organization that arranged with YouTube to be available so that we can hit a button. You put the, uh, your donation in there. YouTube sends that money straight into the bank account of Feeding Texas. I don't touch it. You don't have to worry about if I'm taking all this money and running. I don't even see it. All I do know is in the last few days, we've raised almost $5,000. So cheers to that. We'd like to make it more. So if you're in ability to help these folks in Texas out, that'd be great. Remember, when you give to a food bank, every dollar you raise goes three or four times as far, which means we've probably created, what is that? Almost 18,000 meals so far, this channel. So cheers to you guys. Best way to heat a crawl space? Watch my video on that. Cheers. Hello, is Jeff on the air? What can I do to help you out? Hi, hi Jeff. My name is Diane, and I'm from. Hi, Diane. What what what's going on? Where are you from? Um, Houston. You're from Houston. Did you have power yes. during the storm, Diane? No, sir. That's why I'm calling because. Um, wow. Okay. I'm pretty much lost. Yeah. Pretty much a lot. Yeah. So. Um, uh, tell it. Tell us what happened, Diane. We'll give you a minute. We're not in a hurry. Tell us what happened. Well, um, well, but the pipe when we were not here, and uh, in the bedroom, and the water fell all through the um, the bottom, 
Yeah. To my daughter's new room, to my daughter's room, and I just moved in the house five months ago, and I had a new carpet in my bedroom and laminate in hers, and my daughter's room, and my son in his bedroom, a uh, new carpet as well. Yep. And uh, the water ran underneath the wall, uh, but it busted. Uh, it busted from the ceiling, of course. Okay. I'm not sure um, if it went through the wall, but, um, but I took out all the carpet. Uh, we had to take out all the carpet, and then as we, as my husband, we don't have any parts down here, so um, he fixed it himself. Uh, we were find we were on a scavenger hunt the weekend, right? To find parts, and he fixed one. He fixed the leak that was above the the, the bedroom bath, uh, the guest bath. But in the moment that we were fixing that and turned the water back on, you found another one. The sun, my, my actually it busted. Yes. Yep. As we were turning it on, uh, the bedroom to my son bus, uh, busted uh, uh, the pipes. The okay. Screen. So can I ask a couple of quick, quick questions here? Yeah. Do, do you currently have the water on in the house or off? It's on. He fixed them all. He fixed them all. He found enough parts. Okay, that's good. So step one, you can use the bathrooms. Yes, sir. I can, we can. Yes. That's, that's good. Yeah. So you're on boil water advisory, but and you have power again. So you can cook. You can use the bathrooms. Are, yes. Have you heard anything from your insurance company? Uh, they're not going to pay. Okay, so at least they gave you an answer. Because yes. lots of people are still waiting to hear. So now you know that you have to do this yourself. Yes. How are you in a financial position to uh, contract this? Or is your husband going to roll up his sleeves yeah. and uh, be a hero? We're going, yeah. yeah. Uh, I have three young kids. Well, I mean, I have three Greetings and my okay. uh, husband, so we're going to roll up our sleeves and yeah. have family help us. So, um, yeah, uh, the, the, the problem is that I'm, uh, because um, the, when the pipe, we contained the one in the guest bathroom, but as we opened the water, um, all, it was raining, it was raining um, in my son's bedroom and we totally lost everything. Right. But, and I took out the carpet, but I'm not sure. Do I take out all the ceiling, uh, all the sheetrock in the ceiling, and all the walls in his room? Okay. Um, I'm not sure because I don't see any water damage. Yeah. But. <laughs> okay. Um, that is the trick. Now, mm, have you? Did you see the video we did yesterday? I did, and I, I, you know, I. I got to it too late. Okay. So I was so, watching your videos late at night. What we did is we we, we posted um, the actual process. We call it remediation. Okay. When that is where you you identify all the wet spots and you remove it all from the house. So I'm just going to go through a quick list for you, but you can refer to that video. It, it We actually built a little props and you can understand how it works. But what you need to do is remove all the drywall that got wet. All right. And all the insulation that got wet. You've already done the carpets because they were soaking wet, I'm sure. Right. But the laminate flooring, is it vinyl or is it um, like a, a like more of a, a wood based laminate? Um, it's one of those um, supposedly um, uh, wet seal ones. But what I think it's one of those, the, the tight where, where you click and lock and it's really tight. I wouldn't say it's waterproof. I did put a, a water vapor, a water, a water, what do you call those things that go under? Yeah, like an under pad with a vapor barrier on yeah. it or something. Yeah. Yeah. What I, I want you to do, that. if that floor got wet and it could feel dry on top and have all kinds yeah. of water underneath that's full of bacteria now. Okay. And it's going to be growing at a really fast rate. And so after three or four days, it starts to get really smelly and it's really not healthy. Okay, so I know you don't want to hear about how much more you got to throw out, but try taking lifting up a corner of the um, your 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 baseboards. All right, in the video I show you, if you take the baseboards off and drill tiny holes around the base around the around the walls of the room, you can actually identify if the walls got wet. Okay. Okay, and so I want you to just make a little project. It's about the first twenty or thirty minutes of yesterday's video. It'll walk you through all of that process. Okay. And then what you can do is we are going to be on the air tonight for another hour and 15 minutes. So 
quick, go watch that video. And if you have more questions, feel free to call back. Okay. Okay. And we are going to do another live show on Thursday. All right. But if you follow the process, like I outlined in that video, your house will dry out and it'll be safe to live in. Okay. Okay. And you won't have to worry about your kids living in an unhealthy place. It's, okay. it's, it's not going to solve all your problems, but for today, your biggest problem is making sure your, your house is safe to live in. Okay. Kids are incredibly resilient and they'll be just fine walking around on the concrete floor for a little while if that's what's necessary. Okay. So, you know, you just take care of the environment first so that they're breathing clean air. And then we'll, we'll get into the next steps later. We're going to make more videos showing you how to restore the house. We've got videos on how to do flooring and drywall and all that sort of stuff too. So you can start devouring the content online, but we're going to do a bunch of videos about specifically, you know, fixing up after a storm. Okay. okay. And, and you'll have lots of help. All right. Now we're going to also be checking out to see if there's going to be some money coming from the state or the feds. Um, we're, we're, we're looking hard at that. I've got some people in Texas looking into programs and going to keep us apprised. And so if money comes available and there's portals and websites to go to, we'll share all that information as well. Okay. Thank you. Hey, my pleasure. And, and best of luck. You got this. Okay. You can do this. You and your husband are going to be just fine. All right. And I know it's not easy, but you're going to be just fine. All right. Thank so you very much. you're welcome. You make sure you call back if you got questions about what's going on. Okay. And, and yep. if, and if, well, you know, I'll let you. yeah, I'm, I'm sure he will. I'm not worried about that. Uh, we'll, we'll let him okay. to spend all his attention on you guys right now. All right. We're going to go and see if we can get another call and help some other folks out, but feel free to call back. Okay. Thank you everyone. Thank all right. You all right. Cheers. Hey, yay. Yeah. Where's my damn Kleenex, Matt? Oh. Holy cow. You know, for everybody who's watching the news out there and they want to spend eight hours a day absorbing COVID information, to hell with it for a few weeks. There are people out there who are really suffering. Insurance is not paying for a lot of folks. And whether they should be or shouldn't be comes down to the contract you signed when you signed it. And there's always going to be a percentage of the population, young, married with kids, you get a house right? 50 bucks a month more for the deluxe version. And they're thinking that's 600 bucks a year. What's the odds that we're going to get a winter storm? And you roll the dice. That's what young families do. I mean, hell, you were all there once. You know, <laughs> We didn't all have the money to do everything perfect all the time. So um, you, know, you can't blame the insurance company. I mean, if you have a problem with what the insurance companies are doing, it's, it comes down to policy. Talk to the people who make policy in your state and tell them to change it so minimum coverage has to cover people for this shit. Did I just say that online? Great. I'm in trouble. My daughter's going to beat me up now. I think we're going to Texas in a couple of weeks. I, you know, I would love to go, but I can't even leave my own backyard during COVID, for God's sake. All right, kids. Listen, there you go. There's another family, three young kids. No insurance. The house is destroyed. They got to do it all themselves. By God, we're going to be here to help them out with the whole process. I'm actually filming with Max on Friday. We're doing a whole remediation video. I'm building I'm building a wall in my house just so I can destroy it and show you guys how to get it done. Like, what else am I going to do? I don't have a flood. <laughs> Crazy, eh? Yeah, I know, Matt. But this is what we got to do. All right, so let's get back to work. Oh, all right. Yeah. Folks, if you're in Texas and you want to give me a call and you need some help, um, by all by all means, do it. 613-599-9771. If you haven't watched our other videos in the last few days, yesterday's video, which would be uh, marked uh, February 21st, we did uh, the entire remediation process. First 30 minutes, we dedicated to how to get rid of all the water in your house and get it cleaned out so that it doesn't go to mold and you don't end up living in a cesspool environment, okay? You don't want mold taking over your house. Dear Lord, that stuff will kill you. I'm telling you right now. Uh, so donate to Feeding Texas and help families like this, right? Have food while they put every dime they can into rebuilding their home for their children. Dear God, I'm right. Um, it takes about 24 hours to dry materials out. Once you get rid of the, the materials that are like, if your drywall is wet, 
but the insulation is gone and there's no more pooled water around, it'll dry within a day or so. If you have your doors and windows open during the day, make sure you close them and lock them at night. Be safe. But, you know, like, uh, man, man, oh, man. Uh, yesterday's video, we, we saw it on Saturday. I took a piece of wet drywall that was sitting there for two hours and I just pinched it and ripped it right off. Didn't have to do. It took no effort. Right. The next day it was sitting separate. It was dry and crispy again, like as if it had never been wet. That's the power of drywall. That's why we made it. That's why we use it because it dries out and maintains its structural integrity. So when you're doing your remediation, don't rip out good stuff, just the soaking wet stuff. Okay. Try to minimize your scope. You don't have to say all the drywall in the house is garbage because water came through the living room ceiling. That's not necessary. Okay. Follow the joist cavities, the ceiling cavities, follow where the water follows and just clean out the mess that's there based on that. All right. Okay. My goodness. Let's get back to some questions. I'll take some more phone calls from anybody who wants to talk to me. Um, that really is a, that's a difficult place. I've never been in a position where I had to hear people that upset calling me and looking for help. That's really kind of freaking me out. But hey, we're here to do it. So let's just uh, buck up buttercup. We'll get back to work. Um, okay, so you got, Jose's asking, he's got a, a broken water line. Is it better to use PEX or PVC in Houston? I would use PEX from here to Mars, my friend. Okay, it's the best plumbing on the planet right now. Don't even think about another option. Um, you've got copper, CPVC, PEX, okay? That's how it works. So it's not even a, an issue. It's not even in the running. Um, hey, cheers, Reg. I'm, I'm glad the videos have helped you out. And we're, we're proud to be uh, part of the solution, not the problem, right? Um, Chris is asking, even if the nails pop, can dry it out, behind, drywall be pushed back up? Yeah. You know, that's the thing. If, you're, if your drywall got wet and it sagged a little bit and the head of the screws slipped just past the paper... Once the drywall is dry again, you can actually re-screw. Just put a screw on each side of that other pop, and then you just watch my nail pop video to finish it all off, okay? That'll work out great. Hello, Jeff here. Who am I speaking with? Hey, Jeff. It's Gailey from Allen, Texas. From Allen, Texas. Well, how are you tonight? Or today, this afternoon? Oh, and you? <laughs> great. Great. Thank you for doing this. You are uh, awful. Well, you know, my, uh, my wife tells me that, so I'm, that's cool. Um, so what was your situation? Did you guys have power? Did you lose power? We lost it for about four days. Well, it would be on about two hours and then off for about 12. So the house could never get warm enough. So yeah. And did you have like a, a good, like natural gas heating system or is it more of an electric heating no. system? Uh, I don't know. To be honest, I'm in a town home. We have a gas water heater. We have a gas fireplace. So you would have a gas fire, a gas heater then. Yeah, for sure. They wouldn't have gone anything different. Okay. So you had heat, but you just had enough to keep yourselves from freezing to death. And that's about it then, eh? Yeah. And we ended up, after two days, we ended up going with in-laws. Okay. But now. We, came, we came, came back to the neighbor's fire sprinklers flooding into our living room. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So your pipes don't necessarily have to burst, but if you got a neighbor... <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> got it. Yeah. So now, I wanted to know, you know, with wet drywall, it just seemed like my baseboards were soggy. So yes. rip those off. Yes. Should I also go ahead and take out the lower parts of the drywall, or do you think it, it might be all right? Okay. So here's the here's the here's the the the, the biggest factor. Okay. Um, when you're dealing with this kind of situation, did you see yesterday's video? No. Okay. Um, you know, since we have a lot of new people in the video tonight, Matt, uh, just bear with me two seconds. I'm going to pull up my little demonstration here. And there is a bit of a lag between what we're saying and what you're going to see. But, uh, you know, you'll be able to use this as a reference. Just give me one second. All right. Ugh. So here we go. This represents your wall. Okay. And you'll see this in a second. But when you take your baseboards off, what you've got in behind your wall is a bottom plate that's one and a half inches thick. And if your baseboards are more than that, then you're in great shape because you have a caulking line that it tells you where the top of the baseboard is. Does that make any sense? Yes, it does. 
And so then what we did yesterday is we just took a, a drill and drilled some holes, okay? We used a stud finder, identify the studs, and then drilled holes in between the studs and the wall. Now, you can watch the video from yesterday. The first 20 minutes were dedicated to this, so it'll be real helpful. Um, there's a playlist on our, our main page on YouTube, and you can go and watch that. But the idea is this. That hole, when you stick your finger in there, you, if there's insulation, and in behind that drywall is wet in the insulation, then you're in a bit of a trouble. Then you got to cut your drywall at about two feet high because you got to get that insulation out because the insulation is holding water against the drywall. And before the drywall can dry, it'll go moldy. Okay. Two feet. Well, here's the thing. If you, how, how long did it happen? This was like three or four days ago now, right? Okay. Yeah. All right. So you take a pencil. If you want to try to try to be um, less aggressive, <laughs> okay, I'm going to show you this. If you take your pencil or, or a drill bit, like a square bit, and you push against the drywall, right now, I'm pushing as hard as I can, and I can barely even make a dent, okay? If you go over there with a pencil or a drill bit, and you just, and you sink right into the drywall, it's still far too wet, okay? So you can just keep doing a pressure test higher up the wall, okay? You don't need any fancy tools. Until that drywall is solid enough that you're not poking through, that's where you draw a line, you cut the drywall. Okay. Okay, because it's soaking it up like a sponge. All right? Okay. Now, the other thing you can do, okay. you could just cut underneath the baseboard and do and then just do a test real quick. Do like a little five or six inch piece. See if it's gone moldy yet. And if it hasn't and there's no insulation, you can just drill a bunch of holes and throw a fan on it. And it'll dry out overnight. But if you have insulation, chances are it's holding the water in the insulations too. Okay, so if the insulation is wet in the wall, then enough water came through that you're in a little bit of trouble there. So there's kind of three situations. If there's no insulation, okay, then you can put a fan on it. If there's insulation but the insulation's dry, you can put a fan on it. Okay, but if there's insulation in that wall and the insulation's wet, you got to cut the drywall. At this point, it's been too many days, and it'll never dry out. Okay? Okay. A piece of the drywall actually pushed in, and I'm sticking my hand in there, and it seems a little dry. It seems dry on the inside, but uh, I will do, I'll do the drill trick. Yeah, so give that a shot. Now, the wall between you and your neighbor is a party wall, and it should have insulation, right? Uh, yeah, it does. Okay, yeah. good. So that's for soundproofing. So at least they built your house right. <laughs> that's the good news, right? <laughs> now, if that insulation, it may not be wet because if the flood, here, I'll turn my thing around, okay? Water goes through the path of the least resistance, okay? So I'll get a marker and I'll put this on here. If the water came from your neighbor's house, which is what was represented on this over here, and it the water comes across the floor. It'll go underneath the two by four. And, and, um, and it won't go above the two by four until there's an inch and a half of water inside the building. Okay. And so there's a good chance that the water all went underneath before it went up and over. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's also a long wall, too, so there might be some sections of the wall. There might be different sections that are wet and dry and otherwise, but here's the thing. Yeah. If you're not exactly sure, and it's just the one party wall, and you cut all across here, beneath your baseboard line, okay, make sense? Then you can open this up, and you can just take your hands, and you can, if it, the insulation's soaking wet, you can cut the insulation with a knife as well. All right. If it's not soaking wet, it's just damp. You can lift it up in the cavity, stuff it up a little bit, wait till it to dry. Okay. And then when everything's dry, you can pull the insulation back down nice and tight. And you just go buy a sheet of drywall and, and screw it in, put the baseboard back on. You don't even have to do any mudding. Okay. I like that idea. Yeah. And, and the baseboard, just get it somewhere where there's got a fan as well and let it dry. And if it has a little bit of gray or black on it, Okay, you can wipe that off with a rag with a bleach solution or something like that. Just mild. It's not a big issue. And let it dry. And, and when everything's dry, you can put it all back together. And then just nail it on and put a thin little bead of caulking there. And you're, you're back in business. 
Okay. All well, right. Thank you for that. I have one more question. Yeah, shoot. When we were in the, when we were in the cold, yep. the exterior door was just letting all kinds of cold air all around through through the house. Yes. I wanted to know what I can do to, to stop the draft from, from the front exterior door. Mm, okay. Um, wow. It, it all depends on your door, how it's built. And what, what is it made of metal or is it made of wood? It's builder grade. I think it's metal. Okay. Does it have a, like a gasket that the door is supposed to be sealed up against? Yep. It's, it's kind of short though. <laughs> this I is it. It's good condition, but it's, it's so being, being from Texas, you probably aren't too concerned in most times of the year if there's a little bit of cool breeze coming through. But when it hits minus six, you sure feel it then, don't you? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So sometimes what we have to do is we have to adjust the latch plate on the, on, the, on the wall so that when you do close the door, the door is closed, pulled tight into that gasket all the way around. Sometimes you have to add an extra piece of peel and stick gasket on the door itself to make sure you get good contact. Okay. And so okay. doors can warp in the heat. And so you can have it closed perfectly. And then you still have a huge gap for cold air. So take a look at that. We did a video about uh, winterizing your home. Not a lot of folks in Texas are winterizing their homes, but um, there, there's some great tips and tricks on there for, for taking care of that. Okay. And you can, you can have a look at that on our channel. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. What you're doing is incredible. Well, it's just answering the phone, darling. That's not a big deal. We're happy to help. All right. You take care. And if you've got other questions down the road, uh, we're going to do another live show on Thursday. And uh, we're going to have an announcement of how many more of these we're going to be doing and when. Um, so people know what to expect. Okay. And uh, make sure you subscribe to our channel and, and click the bell for notifications. Because that way we'll do community posts and you'll get notified and updates. Okay. Oh, I'm a faithful watcher. I've been watching you for about six months now. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, that's cheers. I'm glad to be able to be here for our viewers. That's awesome. And and uh, you got this. You're going to be just fine. Just just remember, it's common right. sense. If you yep. if it can't be dried out, then it's got to be pulled out. Okay. Okay. All right. All the best. Thanks, Jeff. Oh, one more thing. Okay. You're um. Oh, darn. I should tell you, guys, if you if you aren't covered by for flood insurance with your own insurance, but your neighbor's house floods out and your house gets wet as a result, your insurance probably will cover you for that because it's not your fault. Ha ha. All right. It's a different kind of flood if it comes from a neighbor. So don't be afraid to call and find out. All right. Thanks for taking that, Matt. Appreciate it. Uh, there's a question. Sorry, we're done with the phone. There's a question regarding if you have plaster in your wall, are you able to do your draining and airing out technique with a plaster wall, lath and plaster? Yeah, lath and plaster works very similar to everything else. If it gets wet, it'll get dry, okay? The secret, again, is what's in behind the wall? Is it an air cavity? If it is, you can drill holes and, and put a fan to it, and you'll dry it out. Um, remember, if you only put one hole and put a fan up against it, you're pushing air into a hole that has nowhere to vent. So I always drill a second hole. <laughs> so there's a circulation going on. Um, don't be afraid to put a hole at the top. If you're drilling a hole at the bottom and putting a fan on, that's the fastest way to dry anything. And you can just do a California patch. We got videos on all that kind of stuff. Anyway, the, the goal is not to worry about the cosmetics of the home as much as making sure it's healthy and we don't have a mold problem. So, Hello, it's Jeff here. Who am I speaking with? Hey, Jeff. It's uh, Lewis down in Houston. Lewis in Houston. How are you doing, Lewis? I'm, I'm doing better than, than most. Uh, I can't complain. <laughs> there you go. So you had power through the storm and you didn't get a burst? Uh, no. no. Okay. Actually, uh, we lost power for a while, especially during the real cold stuff. And then I did get a burst, uh, but it was an outside wall. Okay. Um, so I have a few questions about that. But then also my sister, she had three bursts in her attic and she's, I mean, it's bad. Yeah. Uh, carpet soaked in four rooms. It's, uh, it's really bad. So I have a few questions on that too. Okay. So you go ahead and, and, and you steer and I'll just, uh, I'll answer as we go. Okay. So on mine, um, the, the water burst in a cavity, uh, kind of where the washer and dryer connects and, uh, it was kind of isolated to that cavity. 
Um, we were able to jump jump on it and turn the water up quick. Um, water did get over a tile that's in that laundry room. Mm-hmm. So my question is, uh, we pulled all the sheetrock out, and thank uh, thank God I was watching your stuff because I, I just cut a hole and got a plumber to put a cap on it until we can get that single line repaired. But um, I went ahead and, and I saw your stuff, and it said pull all the sheetrock out, and I did that, and it was very wet down there at the base plate. So I'm glad that I watched you, and we put some fans on it, and it's been drying out for a couple days. Nice. But I'm wondering. I have to imagine water got either under the tile or kind of, you know, tile's not always solid right underneath. It's got grooves and stuff. Do I need to pull out that tile or do you think it just, it'll dry out or what are your thoughts on that? All right. So the, 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 the great news is that tile jobs on a slab yep. are almost impervious to fresh water flooding. The water needs to sit there for more than three days or be sewage before we even consider removing the tile because it is going to dry out just fine. Okay. All right. So you don't have nothing to worry about. All right. Great. So no mold or anything will grow, grow under that. No, because there's no organics. Okay. Right. So you're going to be okay. Okay. So, um, so the room that butts up to that uh, laundry room is our bathroom Mm -hmm. and some water started seeping, I guess, under the baseboards or, you know, cracks there in the corner. Not a lot. Um, do I need to go in there and tear out that sheetrock and, uh, baseboards and that, that room next to it? I mean, I'm talking like maybe less than half a cup of water came through. Yeah. So in, in that situation, um, because you didn't have a lot of water, it has to get to at least an inch and a half tall as far as the flood level before it would go over top of the base plate. Okay. Makes sense? So then whatever went under that plate was only the wood and the concrete that it's dealing with, and yep. and that's going to dry out just fine. Perfect. Now, there's going to be drywall on the bathroom side that might soak up a little bit of that water. Mm-hmm. So, again, like just take a drill bit or something right at the top of the, the, the baseboard. And just give okay. it a bit of a push. And if it if it pushes in, then that drywall is too wet. Take the baseboard off and then put a fan on it. Okay. And you'll be fine. All right. Great. All right. All right. Now, so now with my sisters, um, yes. we we pulled out the carpet, and uh, then we pulled out the sheetrock um, that was right below the brakes. Okay. Um, Again, um, the question, you know, baseboards and the sheetrocks in those rooms, kind of the same thing. I mean, I, I have to imagine some of it got in, but the carpet mostly sucked up most of the water. I mean, we pulled that out like a, a day later. Yeah. Um, so do you think we need to mess with those or do that same test that you just described? Do the same test. And then in that room, like my model shows, you've taken the baseboard off. Did you see that with the last lady I was talking to? I, I just tuned in. I just, okay. We were finished up the call. I was like, I'm going to talk about this in that call. No, that's fine. So here's your living room wall, right? Now you're, you're a few seconds behind me, so I'm going to let you catch up. But basically what you're going to do is you're going to pull off the baseboard because baseboards are actually installed a little bit higher than the carpet. So they can tuck underneath. Okay, right. And usually that tucking process makes the, the carpet in contact with the drywall. And so you notice from the when you pulled the carpet up, the whole carpet was wet. There's no such thing as a dry spot on a carpet after a, a, a situation like that because it sucks it like a sponge. Well, the drywall is even more of a sponge. And that's one of the reasons why. As soon as the moisture hits the drywall, it starts to like suck like a vacuum and pulls the water through the carpet into the wall. All right? So what you want to do is you want to pull the baseboard off, drill some holes above the plate, and if there's insulation, check to see if it's wet. If there's no insulation, then, then then you take the drill bit and you give it a push test. If you can't push through the drywall with the drill bit with ease, then it's solid enough without insulation, you can just leave the baseboard off and dry it. Okay? okay. If there's insulation, feel inside the hole. If the insulation's wet, then you're in trouble. But most likely, if it's just the perimeter of the room, what you're going to have is damp drywall and the insulation, if it's there, it's, it's irrelevant because the water came from a different source and then... Tra- you know, it tracked across the room. So by taking off the baseboards, drilling some holes, all right, exposing the cavity in behind, you can actually dry the drywall super quick because now you have air flowing behind the wall as well. Okay. Okay. The real secret here is after a, a day or two of drying with the holes in it, you can take a knife and you can cut the drywall like a square, like three by three inches, and then inspect the back of it. 
if it's gone to black mold, then you're going to have to cut until the mold is removed. Okay. 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 Fair enough. Yeah. But and then um, you can peel the baseboards, number them, set them aside, dry them, and then you can reinstall them again later. They're they're particle board, so they're like well, they're swollen up in oh. garbage. Then yeah, they're done. Yeah, yeah. So we're we'll probably just going to replace those. So there you go. So then now you've got the benefit of since you're going to be buying new baseboard anyway, <laughs> you you if you you could go to three inch baseboard and give yourself lots of room to create some space to to dry that out. Right. Okay. All right. All right. Good deal. Um. So um on on my sister's house um. They're airing everything out. Um, they've. Uh, how long, I guess, does that need to occur? Do, do you just do a touch a test on the on the wood and see if it's dry, or is there a method or something? Yeah, there's there's uh, all kinds of testing equipment out there. One second, Matt, do we have that drywall on top of the pan there? All right. So on Saturday, I put a piece of drywall in a in my baking dish. Oh no, no, just the big piece is fine. Yeah. All right. So Saturday, we put this in. All right, and you can see on the video, it's it's kind of junky. All right, this was soaking wet. It actually has a, a line on it, and the paper is delaminating. Okay, it's a bit of a mess, but check this out. It still feels damp, right? Because it was sitting on that bucket of water, and now it's been two days later. But yeah, I'm gonna just try to do a visual here. When I put my drill bit up to it, okay, it pushes in. Right, as compared to dry drywall, <clears throat> it barely makes a dent. If you've got damage like that, your drywall is still wet. Okay, and that won't air out, or that's better to remove. It will, but it's wet on both sides. Uh -huh. Okay, so, we have to air out from so you've got to drill holes and get access to it. Now, my experience yeah. when when drywall is soaking wet, and it's been like. I'm going to say it's like a three-day rule. If, it, if it's if it been in contact with water because of insulation for three days, you're in a bit of trouble. Or if it's in, been soaking wet, but there's baseboards there, and it's hard for that part of the drywall to dry because it's protected from air movement. Okay? So three days is a bit of a rule here. Now, of course, the best way to test it is just cut a piece behind the baseboards and have a look. It's only drywall. Right? Okay. Yeah. It's it's not even ten bucks for thirty square feet, so right. <laughs> it's I know it's frustrating to 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 do the drywall taping and mudding and stuff, but we got videos to help you with all that. Sure, yeah, right, and you can do it. But the the whole point is is if you're not sure the condition of your drywall, take a sample and check the backside. Okay. If it hasn't gone to mold, it can still be dried. Okay. That's the rule. Okay. okay? And and the wood behind the drywall is that do you need to check for mold on that wood or is okay wood? so yeah that's a good question but um, so the wood already has mold in it okay that's where the mold comes from we actually build houses in North America and provide its own mold source right and the, what we do is we try to keep them dry and as long as they're dry the mold doesn't grow okay but what happens is anything that gets soaking wet will go moldy. The mold will grow a little bit until it dries out. Now, if the mold grows a little bit and it dries out, the mold stops growing again. Uh -huh. So it's no longer dangerous. So you can have mold inside a cavity of the wall that's proliferated and, oh, and it got dry and it just stopped. Right? It's like an army without a weapon. It's, it's not that dangerous. <laughs> Even though they're still sitting there. Now, if you want to deal with the, the, the quality of the wood and you've removed drywall, then you can use a product like um, Mold Control from Home Depot. All right. It's a, it's a pre-diluted product and you spray it on the wood and it'll kill any surface mold. You could use uh, um, bleach and water, but then, again, you got to be careful what clothes you're wearing. You got to have eye protection and maybe gloves. The Mold Control product is completely safe. It won't harm you. You don't have to worry about fumes. There's no ammonia. There's no, there's no bleach in it. And it uses a product called Concrobium, and you could even buy that online from Amazon in an undiluted version. So if you got a lot of space you want to do, you can buy like a twenty dollar jug. It's got like it's a full gallon, and then you can make your own, mix your own mix, right? You follow the instructions on it. The, 
Yeah, and you can just spray it on there and leave it alone. You don't have to wipe it off or wash it off. You just spray it and leave it, and it kills it. Okay. Okay. Now, we have a, a link on our videos for Amazon.com. Right. And if you go there, we have a section there for mold control and all the tools and materials you might need. And you can, you can just use those links to buy stuff. And okay. that even helps support our channel a little bit. Uh, yeah. I, I might even get a nickel off that. <laughs> <laughs> At least a nickel. At least a nickel. Well, hey, yeah, buy from Amazon. Give me a nickel. There you go. That's our new model. <laughs> okay, last question. Um, what about application of kills on the wood uh, before a repair? Do you recommend? Does it matter? I mean, you know, the only time I use kills is if there's, um, um, wasps. yeah, the wasps. No, <laughs> Maddie, <laughs> they're good for wasp nests. Um, the kills isn't really necessary if you're going to use concrobium. If you're not going to use concrobium, then then at least seal any visible mold on the wood. Okay. Now, we're dealing with the rule of law here that's anything more than 15 square feet of mold really needs to be treated properly. And so properly means concrobium. You want to kill it. If it's less than that, it's just a little bit here, a little bit there, then go ahead and kill it with the kills. That's what I'm going mean, to kill it. All right. If it's more than that, then you, you probably would want to use concrobium and, and, and just, you know, douse the whole frame in the whole area. Because if you're not using a moisture meter, you really don't know what the moisture level has left. And you want to make sure it's dead. Right. Right. So for, for the DIYer, I would say concrobium, um, and anything more than 15 square feet, just to make sure. Okay. All right. And one more thing. Um, so that area where it burst, um, I guess... They did not put insulation there. So it was just, it was sheetrock, it was the pipe, and then it was the hardy plank. Okay. And it was an outside wall, and a wall, you could see daylight yep. on the bottom edge from the hardy plank. Sure. Um, so when I go to repair it, what do you recommend as far as putting in there insulation-wise? Um, I don't really, I don't think it matters what insulation you use. Um, the... The rule of thumb is, is like, if you have a water burst, you're going to get the insulation out of the cavity anyway. Right. So I'd be more concerned with watching the beginning of this video later on tonight when it gets public, because I'm giving insulation tips for the lines up in your attic to make sure it never bursts again. Okay. And, and that really is the secret. If you're going to put insulation in, make sure that the water lines are on the interior of the insulation. Right. So that if you don't lose power, at least the heat will keep the water line from freezing. Right. And the insulation isolates the heat from the cold, and your water line should be on the hot side of the wall. Right. Okay. Okay. That's really the only thing. So which which kind you use it? I'll leave that up to you. Um, pink is a lot cheaper than mineral wool up here where I live. Um, they're the same price on the bag, but it covers twice as much square footage. I don't know if that holds true everywhere. So. They both insulate thermally the same way. Yeah, I, I'm definitely going to, you know, if we ever get an event like this again, I, I I think you mentioned it earlier, actually, yesterday's video, just turn the main off, drain the pipes. Yeah, um, and we went through a whole protocol in the beginning of this video, actually teaching exactly what your steps are, because there's lots of great ideas that happened out there that didn't work because then people lost power, and that was outside of their control. Yeah. And so... The process I laid out is actually assuming you're going to lose power, how to keep control of everything. And so make sure you watch it because there's there's five or six steps there that, that most people don't even know that they should be doing. Okay. All right. Then And if it happens again, consider moving north. And then you won't ever have this problem because we build different. <laughs> so, it's, it's really eye-opening to see how affordable uh, the house was built when you just see the exposed pipe in the attic. It's, it's but you know, we never expected a bit like this. No, no, I wouldn't say it's built horribly, I just think it's built for different weather considerations. Yeah, yeah, that's all. We, we weren't prepared for anything like this. That's fine. And we've um, had our fair share of storms that, that hit up us in Ottawa where we were just fine in the wintertime, you know, like we're snug as a bug in a rug. But we've had tornadoes recently and we've had floods and we've had rainstorms that drop as much rain as LA that overwhelmed our sewer systems. And everybody got a basement full of sewage. And so, you know, it, it, everybody gets unique weather patterns. And we can't build every house to protect every scenario because it'd be unaffordable. Yeah. So true. now we're stuck with dealing with, okay, so then let's be, have a process in place so that at least we're, 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 we're acting instead of reacting, right? 
Right. Anyway, thanks for the call, bud. We yeah, uh, quick, all the best to you I'm and your sorry. sister. You, you mentioned uh, I've seen one of your flooring videos before, hmm. and you talked about how you were you have like a flooring deal with some people. Can you talk about that? And, and I would love to know, because I know my sister's going to be ordering a lot of flooring because she's going to replace all that. <laughs> so I'll, I'll hang up and listen. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. I'll mention that real quick. Yeah. All right. Thank you. <laughs> okay. All right. Unfortunately, if you live in Texas, the flooring deal may not be much good to you. I'm not sure what's going on, but um, we still are having some shipment issues because we're going Canada, U.S. border, and we got COVID going on. Depending on when, feel free to check it out, though. You can always go to our webpage, www.homerenovationdiy.com, and go to the Shop With Us section, and we've got some affiliates there that are helping us out. Um, I would suggest that if you're not sure about what flooring to buy and you're in the Houston, Texas region, check out Flooring Decor. From what I could guess when I was down there visiting in Florida last year, I just love the store, right? They got the right pricing. They got great um, in-store uh, e examples so that you can sample different quality lines of product and different under pads and everything else. They're not hiding anything. They're not trying to force sell. And they carry the entire Map Eye and Schluter line, which is brutally important if you're going to do shower renovations. So I'm a big fan of Florin Decor. No, they don't pay me for that opinion, but I have one, so I don't mind sharing it. Um, yeah, there you go, right? People are here are agreeing with me. Storms even happen on Mars. Yeah, you're darn right. All right, guys. Uh, da, 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 da. Is solar power hard to install to prepare against power outages? Um, no, they put a panel on, they put a battery on the house, it holds energy, and it might be enough to keep your furnace running for a few days, even if you're full of clouds. So I would suggest that sort of thing would be really good for you. Hello, Jeff here. Who am I speaking with? Hey, my name is uh, Zach. I'm from Carrollton, Texas. Hey, Zach. How are you tonight? I'm doing all right. I'm using tonight a little loose. It's only 20 after 4 where you're from. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, we we uh, luckily survived everything all right. We did actually um, lose power and ended up leaving our house, but we ended up doing the right thing accidentally, I guess. Um, I helped them originally from Utah, and so um, I ended up turning off the water at, at the main Yes. After we had uh, ended up getting a couple of frozen pipes, so that was a new experience for me myself. So, right. Uh, I bet it is. Yeah. Um, so I'm also learning again that uh, Texas is just kind of bad with some of their building choices. And, no, you know. And one second before we go further, no, let's not beat up on Texas for their building choice. Right. Texas, okay. Texas built for their weather to make affordable housing for the average folks, and there's nothing wrong with that. The storm was unique, not the building construction. Mm. All right. Now, in the beginning of this video, did you get a chance to watch that? I, not the beginning of this one. I'm still trying to catch up on. Okay. Your, so your fair point. enough. So tonight, when you get a chance or whatever, tomorrow, before you make any major purchases or building considerations, check this video out because it'll show okay. you installation techniques that'll like dramatically change your world. And it won't require you to change all your copper to pecs in your house and you'll be ready for the next storm. Okay. All right. Well, that might even answer some of my questions. Well, shoot. Let's go through while we're here because people are joining the, the yeah, feed all the time. Part of the where we ended up uh, getting frozen pipes was where we have uh, both a shower and uh, actually the whole bathroom is on the exterior wall. Mm -hmm. And then uh, our kitchen sink, which is also on the exterior wall. Yep. And uh, so that was even before our, our house uh, lost power. We were trying to use like a space heater to heat it up as best we could, but uh, we ended up uh, having to turn off the water and and try to drain the lines as best we could and go to a friend's house. They somehow survived, but I, I know I'm going to have to do a renovation of those, uh, that, at least that bathroom at some point. Is it worth switching things out to go to the other side so it's on an interior wall? Um, Oof, or yeah insulating better uh, to maybe do something like a, uh, a rock wool just because it's a little bit more water resistant or, or what's your thought? Well, the rock wool will only help you if the cavity gets soaking wet. And okay. generally speaking, if the cavity gets soaking wet, then the rock wool insulation won't lose its, uh, it won't lose its shape. So it still insulates in the future and it lets the water drain. But if the water is trapped in the wall and it never opens up, on an exterior wall, it's going to go moldy. So then you're opening the wall, you got to get rid of the insulation and let the frame dry out too anyway. So it doesn't really have a benefit if it's going to get soaking wet. If it's going to get just a little bit of ice damming water, it's fabulous, right? 
Okay. But, so let's just deal with that. Now, you might find it's a lot more cost effective to renovate your house from the outside than the inside. Okay. What's your house made of outside? It's a brick veneer. It's, 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 it says it's brick veneer, but really I don't see any like um, house wrap or anything on it. So it's basically brick and then insulation and then what the drywall. Right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So there goes that idea. You're probably <laughs> Depending on what your house is made of, it might be more cost effective to go with the outside wall. Um, okay. Yeah. Now, hmm, I, I would suggest that if you were to remove the vanity off the wall, okay, hmm. that's a piece of furniture. Okay. Open up that, that water supply cavity and make sure it's insulated properly. All right. Okay. And then you can put it all back where it is. And as long as you can maintain heat in the house, you're going to be separated from the freezing cold. You won't have frozen pipes again. Okay. The, um, the challenge is uh, I would be uh, faster to spend money on buying a generator than renovating my kitchen and bathroom. Okay. Fair. Right? Makes sense? Yeah. Yeah. So make sure you got insulation behind the pipes, like on the outside of the wall, and the pipes are on the interior of the wall. Okay. That's really the only thing you got to do. Um, I, I saw in one of the other videos that somebody had asked about um, gaps and brick and everything and actually putting in, in great stuff in that gap. Do you think that would, I would assume that would help in this situation as well? Well, it's kind of like um, anywhere where you have a, an air draft. Like um, all it takes is one mouse and he'll tunnel a spot through insulation and now you've got a draft. So you can have that minus six just blowing right onto a copper line and all it takes is one inch and <laughs> you've got a burst right, right. pipe, right? So yeah, um, anytime you find a hole, you can stuff it. That's a good thing. Okay. All right. Well, I think we narrowly avoided a disaster, but I'm, I'm just trying to think for the future. So make sure nothing like this happens again. Yeah. Well, check out this video specifically. We, we labeled it to talking about, um, you know, how to prevent this from happening again. It's, it's on the top of everybody's mind. And uh, there's some great advice in there at the beginning of the show tonight. And it'll go a long way to helping you guys out for sure. All right. Well, thank you very much. It's very cost effective information too. I appreciate your help all the time. I would think that most of the disasters that people have faced can be solved for less than a hundred dollars and a little bit of preventative medicine. Oh yeah. It's, it's yeah. all on my list now. Tom. Yeah. 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 <laughs> all right. Fantastic. Well then next time the winter comes, you can just sit back and laugh. Yeah, for sure. All right, thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Everybody. Cheers. Oh yeah. Yeah. Where are we here, bud? Hey, let's don't forget, we got to mention, in case you're just joining us, we are raising money through YouTube to for Feeding Texas. It is a fantastic charity that supplies all of the food banks in and around the local Texas areas with food to help people who are affected by this flood who do not have insurance coverage. And there's a ton of them. Trust me, if you don't believe me, all you got to do is watch this video again tonight and listen to the phone calls that come in. It'll break your heart. All right. So if you donate to Feeding Texas, the money gets sent straight to them by Google's power. I don't touch the money. You don't have to worry about who the heck I am. And if I have any integrity, just uh, be happy to know that you can funnel money to give those folks a hand. Remember, every dollar buys about three meals because they got purchasing power and they can go straight to the suppliers and they'll give them great deals and that you're not going to get in the grocery store for. That's for sure. Yeah, guys, listen, don't start renovating your house and doing like forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars of the renovations over plumbing pipes. For God's sake, you know, switch over the one in the attic from copper to PEX, insulate properly upstairs, and then buy a generator. Right? And relax. It's just a few days a year. Okay? A couple gallons of gas will go a long way a few days a year. Not a real big deal. All right. Yeah, worth mentioning tri-fuel generators. You know what? Yeah, if you wanna you you, you can go as prepper as you want. But the point is, is since you can't control the power, unless you're going to renovate your house and do all kinds of dramatic things and build it like it's a, a home. And see, even our houses here, if we lose heat, we risk blowing our water pipes. You'd only do so much. You got to have heat. Yes, sir. What's the name of that caller? Oh, dude. My brain don't work. Well, if somebody, somebody did. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sorry, guys. Uh, anyway, here we are. Um, come visit me in Hull when you're done this. I have a great idea for your show. No, I'm not, I'm going home after the show. Trust me. I'm going to go hang out with my wife tonight and probably relax my brain 
If you have a great idea for my show, then put it in the comment section on the video. I'd be more than happy to hear it. Um, anonymous donation, $55 to Feed Texas. You just bought 150 meals. That'll take care of a family of five for an entire month. And that is an awesome thing. So think about it. $50, folks. That's a great goal. Take care of a whole family for a month. Man, oh, man, oh, man. There ain't nothing wrong with that. Okay. Uh, yes, you need an electrical disconnect. Yes, you're going to need some. But the point is you can buy a generator and a disconnect and an emergency switch and all that kind of jazz and pay an electrician to help you out. And you can do all kinds of really top of the line stuff cheaper than an entire bathroom renovation. All right. So feel free. Don't renovate your whole house. Be emergency prepared year round forever. And don't let this storm freak you out too much. There's going to be more. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, you know, get ready. Winter's coming. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'm having too much fun here. Why the heck not? Uh, David says, hey, Jeff, I got a home with a shower on the upper floor that's leaked down into the kitchen. There's no noticeable water damage in the ceiling. Is this something I can fix myself or should I hire? There's no noticeable water damage, but the shower leaked. So there's two kinds of water damage this storm has, David. And I'm going to be honest with you. Sometimes it's just ice dam. We talked about it in the beginning of the show. If you want to see me draw pretty pictures and talk about it, you can watch the beginning of the show later tonight when it's published. But the point is this. Ice damming is a cup of water, a couple of cups of water that gets under the shingles. And then it drips down in a wall cavity of a house somewhere, ends up in a kitchen ceiling. And maybe you get a few drips coming out of a light and people go, oh, we sprung a leak. And you know what happens? Nothing. The house dries it all out and everything's fine. You might get a little water stain on your ceiling. You got to put a little kills and then a little bit of paint. No big deal. Trust me, if a pipe burst and you need repairs, you'd know. It's five gallons a minute of water coming out of that sucker. And there ain't no such thing as a drip when you got a pipe burst. Okay, let's get into some more questions. And if you want to make a call, you're down in Texas, you want some help or you need some strategies, you're in the middle of the cleanup, give us a call, 613-599-9771. The number's at the top of the screen in the chat. And that is me. That is the blue phone right here. Boom, boom, boom. This is your lifeline. Folks, I've been in construction all my life. My first renovation was before I got out of the womb, okay? Let's just be honest. I, uh, I've been working 80 to 100 hours a week since the day I got married, and that was 19 years old. I'm 51 now. I've, uh, I've lived two or three or four lifetimes, and uh, I spent a lot of years in disaster restoration. Um, I've been through catastrophic loss. The entire city here flooded out one year. I've got some experience. I know what I'm talking about. I'm not just full of hot air. Whew. Trust me. My wife thinks I'm full of hot air sometimes, but that's all right. Um... Brittany says she's a mama of four and redoing her floors. What's the best flooring for the entire house? Please help. I'm struggling, but can't pay contractors. You're damn right you can't. The best floor, Brittany, and I'm going to be honest for you. Are you ready for this? It is a vinyl plank SPC core. All right. You can install that flooring with a utility knife. You can cut it, flip it, and snap it with your own strength. You don't even need any major power tools. The only thing you might need is maybe a jigsaw to do all those fancy little cuts. Okay. So consider that we did a video in my kitchen. If you go to my uh, YouTube page and you just type into the search tool on the homepage, you put in there vinyl floor. Boom. You're going to see me doing a video about how to install a kitchen floor. You can do this. It's measuring and cutting. It's not that tricky. Everybody can do their own flooring. All right. Save your money. When you're done doing your flooring, take all the money you saved and Take those four babies on a vacation. <laughs> All right. Woo. Everybody has an idea for channel content for my show. Cool. I'll, I'm happy to read anything. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not all that smart. I'm not all that edumacated. I could use some help once in a while. Uh, you got to love the Game of Thrones reference, right? Nothing wrong with that. Because, uh, I mean, we may not have creatures with ice blue eyes showing up, but let me tell you something. When you're lying in bed and it's minus six in Texas and you hear Psh! and it's the roof, it's, it freaks you out, right? Like, I mean, that's just frost in your roof. It freaks you out. Hell, it wakes me up at my house still. Happens almost every week. Um, people are giving us lots of cred here, dude. You know, listen, I'm, I'm, 
What do you do? You deserve it. Like the world's a really small place now, right? And I'm over here and I, I've got an ability to help. I got a studio. I got a son willing to give me a hand and we, we have a bit of reach, you know, so we're doing what we can do. I, I, I wish there was a hotline. I could say, Hey, YouTube, I'm going live and you know, I know what the hell I'm talking about. So boost me, but I can't do that. So here we are just trying our best. Now, if you, if you want to help even more people out, Everybody watching the show, just go talk to your local news stations and tell them what's going on. And maybe someone will have enough brains to say, we could do a talk about something other than COVID for maybe one day in an entire year. And that would be nice. And maybe we'd be able to help even more people. Oh, God. Oh, my, my. All right. Yep. Lots of great things out there. Um... So there's lots of people out here with big hearts, but not everybody has a big reach. So because I got a reach, it's kind of, it's fallen into me, right? It's just my lot in life to do something with the reach. I mean, and I don't, I'm not Gordon Ramsay. I don't have 50 million subscribers, but uh, you guys have been awesome and I'm proud of you. Oh, your, your response has been phenomenal. Um, then uh, plumber installed particle board under your toilet. Doesn't seem right. Well, Laura, I'm going to have to just say I agree with you. That ain't right. Wow. Okay. Uh, how long does generator last on a given amount of fuel? I assume it needs to be hooked up to the house mains. Actually, here's the joke. A generator, if it's only using just a small amount of power, like if you use your generator just to supply the electricity for your gas furnace, Huh? Think about it. You're hardly using any power. It'll keep the gas furnace running for hours and hours and hours a day. You probably only have to fill it up a couple of times over a few days because you can run a gas furnace for two hours and then turn it off, turn off the generator, give it a few hours, and then turn it back on again. You don't have to leave the generator running all day long because gas furnaces usually have two settings, high and low. And so if the house goes from 72 and it drops down to 50, you turn it back on again, it drops into high and within 30 minutes to an hour, you're right back up to 72 again. That's how they work. So then you only have to use the, 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 the appliance a couple of times. And generally, if it's cold, the cars still work and you can drive to the store and buy more gas if you need it. So uh, I'm going to call that a small issue in the grand scheme of things. Um, snow is built up on the roof. What are you supposed to do with that? Uh, good news. Summer's coming. You're going to be fine. You might get a little moisture getting in the house. And if it's snow and not ice, you can brush it off. But don't get up on a ladder over it. Okay. Your roof shingles are fine. If you get a little bit of ice damming and water creeping in, the house will absorb it. You might have a cosmetic issue to deal with. I wouldn't be too concerned, to be honest with you. Now, if you get obvious signs of paint peeling inside the wall because of the ice damming, then you're going to want to cut that open and repair your insulation. Make sure you got a good thermal break again and then repair that. But that's just drywall. Don't let drywall spook you. It's not worth worrying about. You don't have to do buy a new roof. Don't get up there with an ax or something silly because then you will need to buy a new roof and you might need you know, lose the loss of your legs or something. So it's not worth it. Just let it melt. You'll be fine. Jeff, what's the best type of flooring to install on top of slate tiling? Nothing. Slate tiling is awesome. Just joking. If you want to put flooring on top of slate tiling, I would suggest vinyl. Because right now, vinyl is incredibly thin. And it locks together. And you can put an underpad in so it absorbs the impact noise. And it won't affect the operation of most doors and equipment. And so you don't have to do any other major renovations to your house. That's why I rep recommend to do that. <laughs> Rizzy has donated another 50 bucks. That's four days in a row to Rizzy painting. I know, I know, I know. You are amazing. You know, I'm not the only superhero in this city. There's another one right there. All right. Um, boom, boom, boom. I'm glad you're not Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> you can only fry an egg. Yeah, I think he's got a few more tricks than that up his sleeve, but that's all right. You make me laugh. All right. Um, you you watched a few videos about removing snow if you move. Yeah, you know what? Snow on your roof, uh, whoop de doo it leaves. Hell, I, I don't touch my snow. I got three feet of it right now. So you don't have snow. And if I can leave my snow, you can leave your snow. 
we're all going to be okay. Sooner or later, it will dry out and it'll warm up and everything will be fine. The secret to your house is build it so that it doesn't get wet in the wood. Okay? You need to have a weather protection system, weather diversion. And as long as you've got that, snow, ice, doesn't matter what happens. Okay? It can rain for six months. If your house is built right, it'll stay dry. That is the key. If it's not built right, you're going to have to move. All right. Linda is a member and has a question here. You can't just buy a generator. You have to install a transfer switch in your fuse box. That's a major expense. True. But if you want to be um, independent so that you don't have to rely on the power grid. Now, don't forget, Linda, it only got cold this year. And you got some weather and snow and stuff, right? But you didn't get an ice storm. Like, Ottawa got an ice storm the year before I moved here. And all the accounts from everybody I know about, it was freezing rain for like, I don't know, two or three days. The entire power structure collapsed and there was no power. Some people went weeks without power in the dead of winter. I'm just telling you, you might want to have a generator because I know it was bad and you lost power, but I think it was a supply and demand issue that almost ran the system dry. It's not because you guys lost your infrastructure from ice, and that's still a possibility. You might get an ice storm because that happens around, around the freezing mark, and you're more susceptible to that level of weather than anything else. So don't think that this is as bad as it gets. The bad as it gets is when you get an ice storm for a few days, and that is an Arctic blast coming south when you've got something from the Gulf coming up, and you got all that moisture, and it's freezing while it's raining, and that sucker will weigh down every wire and snap every connection in the city. That is as bad as it gets. Having a generator is probably a really good idea because you guys are in that place where the jet stream is meeting the Gulf Stream. It's very, very probable, okay? I'd say it's more probable than having another one of these four or five day winter blasts. Just saying. Winter is coming. So, yeah, don't do crazy things to remove snow from your house, okay? It'll melt in a week or so. It's not a big deal. If it hasn't melted already, um, uh, you are an expert at weather diversion. Any tips for in-law diversion? <sighs> yeah, you know what? You can just go be a bachelor. You know that's that's that's, that's diversion. Enjoy that. <laughs> All right. Um, Okay, uh, Gary says, hi, he's in Toronto, was shopping for generators for backup furnace power only, and there are many types. Can you please mention what type is more reliable than others? You know what? You can get a generator for 500 bucks. I'm just saying, just, just a simple little gas generator, plug in an extension cord, take that wire inside, open up the switch to your furnace, bring it in, black and white, bam, power to the furnace. I know it ain't legal, but it sure is hella work in a hurry. <laughs> uh, that is what we call, what do we call that? I'm not even going to put a name on it because it'll get in trouble. But that is a great way to break the rules and take care of your family at the same time. Perfectly safe, perfectly stupid, but perfectly cheap. Okay. There's got to be a solution for everybody in every income bracket. Not every solution can cost 20 grand. That's just the way it is. Like, who's got that? But if you can get a three or $500 generator and a $50 extension cord, I'll tell you what, black to black, white to white at that furnace switch will bloody well work. All right. Now, let's see. Um, I can run my gas-powered stream heat with only seven watts of AC. That's nice. Uh, how do you soundproof a garage with living space on top? And give the people on top some earmuffs. Um, <laughs> all right. There's a t-shirt. Yeah, right. Thanks, Matt. Folks, we got 15 minutes left, give or take. And if there's anybody else out there who'd like to give me a call and ask me some questions, that's great. Um, I'm sure there's lots of folks who are just uh, dying to watch this video all over again. So we should probably just get off the air and let them do that because we got some great information in the beginning of this video to teach you how to make sure you never have a problem like they had in Texas. Because if you want to grab life by the sh and run it, 
And instead of letting it run you, you can do it for about a hundred bucks. And I got a short list of things that'll help make sure you're prepared for your next winter storm. So you do not have to be a victim of the circumstances that happen down there. Um, make sure that you donate in the videos. Appreciate all the help to Feeding Texas. They're going to need it. There's going to be a lot of folks who would rather put some money towards drywall and plaster and flooring than instead of having to worry about buying some food with their last few bucks. There's a big ass mess down there. Yeah, feel free to call, guys. There we go. All I got to do is ask for a phone call and the phone rings. I just hope it's someone who needs help. It's a live show after all. Hello, it's Jeff here. What can I do to help you? Hey, Jeff, this is Luis out in Texas. Great to see you all the help you're providing. Okay. What's going on with you, buddy? I uh, left my water running while everything was going on down here, and I went out yesterday to try and see if there were any small leaks going on. Mm -hmm. And I turned off all my water, like underneath the cabinets and everything, and I was still seeing the meter running, the little triangle on the <laughs> water meter, so I'm trying to figure out what else I can do to see if I can try and find that. See, I just checked my bill, and it, my water used to double, I guess, in September, and I'm just now looking at it and figuring it out. I'm trying to... That's an interesting so question. Can, okay, so let me ask you some questions. Your your water meter, is that is that located when the water comes up through the slab inside the house? Uh, right out, right outside. Off. It's outside. So your water goes from the street and then it comes up out of the ground outside the house through a meter and then it comes into your house. Is that the idea? It's from the street, the meter, and then inside the house. Oh, so your meter is closer to the street. Yes. So you might have a break in the water line from between the meter and the house. Underneath the ground. All right, so that, that'd be something I have to call somewhere and put for them to check out and see. Yeah, I, I would go for a walk and see if you got any squishy ground over there. Or shut off yeah, shut sure. off, shut off, off your main shutoff valve at the street and see if that stops the meter. Okay. Right? Make sure that you're good. But you've only got interior plumbing and, and a hose bib, which is exterior, right? So did you check your hose bib to see if it was broken? I have. You haven't. What what is the hose bib? It's uh, it's the the water for gardening. Like it comes out usually the back of the house, so you can put on a garden hose. Oh okay okay yeah I I checked that one and it does not, nothing. Okay, so if nothing is leaking in the house and you're still using water, that means you've got a break in the line between the shutoff valve and the house. Now, if the water line that goes to your house was too close to the surface. It could have frozen broke. Oh. Okay. Or or there could be just a, a joint issue somewhere or a threaded pipe joint connection. Um, so definitely turn off the water at the street and, and confirm that everything is working properly and then have somebody come out and take a look at that. Okay. Or you can just take a shovel and you can dig up your whole water supply line right to the house and find the break. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? What else are you going to do? <laughs> anyway, yeah, it's quite possible you got you got a break in the main line. Okay. It was cold enough long enough. So, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's a risk. Really appreciate the help, Jeff. Thank hey, you no much. problem, buddy. Good luck with it, man. All right, ha happy digging. <laughs> Cheers, bud. Thank you, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. Can you imagine, like, not a, not every water supply line going from the street to the house is going to be one solid pipe. There could be fittings. There could have been something that loosened up, you know? Man, oh, man. <laughs> oh, there's so many possibilities. So little time. All right. Guys, it's 547. Do you know where your children are? Uh, 13 minutes left, and this one's over. <laughs> you know, when I was young, we used to have a TV show at 11 o'clock. The, the announcer would always go, it's 11 o'clock. Do you know where your children are? And it was a, like a real thing. We'd watch the TV. This announcement would come on. And it was like really freaky. It's like, wait a minute. Where the hell are my kids? <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, it's a different generation. Uh Okay, um, 
Yeah, three go through the sewage. Oh, yeah, sewage pipes suck. All right, um, got time for another another call, guys. 613-599-9771. If you want some advice on how to remediate your water damage, uh, if you've got bad pressure in some of your faucets and you need information, if you uh, are sitting there with your water turned off because you can't find someone to fix your leak yet, I have a solution for you. It's a DIY plumbing that'll 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 change your life. You can turn your water back on so you can flush the toilet. Any of these things, anything else, problems with your in-laws, problems with hair loss, feel free to call. <laughs> anyway, no, I don't want any hair loss questions. I'm, I'm, I'm already got such a problem. Um, what's my opinion on snow on the roof? It looks pretty. Don't worry about it. It'll leave soon enough. There you go, Denise. Piece of cake. Snow on the roof does not hurt the roof. So don't worry about it. You might get a little moisture get into the building, but the building will absorb it and then it'll release it and it'll be gone and everything will be fine. And if it affected your paint and your cosmetics of the inside of the house, you can always touch that up later. Drywall is made to get wet and then dry again. That's why we call it drywall, not wet wall, because it does dry. Okay. You, the secret is to dry it fast enough so that the mold in the wood doesn't grow. That's all. Another donation to Feeding Texas. Cheers. You just bought 15 dinners for somebody. That's awesome. Okay. All right, guys. Time for everybody to say goodbye. We're going we're gonna to take this one slow and easy. <laughs> so we all got time to wave and say goodbye in the comment section. Ah. Well, we got 15 minutes, and unfortunately, we are still waiting for Diana to call back. So... Are we waiting for Diana to call back? Well, maybe. She might. It's up to you. But that was a damn good video we did. She might not need to call back. Yeah. If she needs to call back. All right, let's let's pump the next one. All right. Sandy, you're going to love this. We're not doing another live show until Thursday. Ah. Yeah. We're going to get everybody a couple of days off. All right. Yes, I'm drinking some of Grandpa's cough medicine. You're damn straight. How else do you think I get through two hours of this? <laughs> We're going to take a couple of days off, okay? Um, people, I'm pretty sure whatever situation you're in down in that storm recovery, the videos that we've made are going to solve your problem. Okay. When we get to Thursday, it, it marks a week from when we started doing videos. And I'm curious to see then, uh, what kind of questions are arising because we're going to be moving into maybe a little bit more of, uh, how do we fix things up? Uh, blah, blah, blah. We're going to just check back and see how everybody's making out and if they're having insurance issues or, they're a little bit overwhelmed or they don't know there. Maybe there's weird smells starting to happen in their house by Thursday. I'm sure. So everybody would be like, what's that stink? Is it mold? Is it mildew? Did I do something wrong? We're going to be around here on Thursday to answer all those questions make sure that your house is a safe, happy place for you and your children, because we don't want you breathing really crappy air and it's easy to fix. Now, we now have a recipe on the chat for grandpa's, cough medicine. It's one third whiskey, one third brown sugar, and one third hot water. That actually sounds pretty damn fine. But uh, that's that's a lot of whiskey for a glass like that. All right. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Don't forget, while you're watching the other videos, we're going to continue this fundraiser going on. All right. Uh, we'd love to get to uh, as much as we can. I don't really have a goal, but you know, heck, there's lots of people out there. I am... Um, it gives me a couple of days. We can do a little bit more research, have a little bit more information available to talk about the uh, the progress and the process, how things are going down there. Thanks a lot for joining us. Uh, lots of love to all of you. Thanks for joining us in the chat. And we will see you on Thursday. All right. Cheers. Ah.